Hello, my name is John Kanalopoulos. I'm a cornea transplant surgeon, and I'll be sharing with you today the triple procedure, penetrating keratoplasty combined with open sky cataract extraction and intraocular lens implantation. A fascinating procedure. You can see here the uh, patient's eye, a failed cornea graft performed in the past. This is a large graft, uh, about um, eight and a half millimeter in diameter. Uh, the patient has developed a very dense uh, cataract uh, and we uh, deemed it necessary uh, not only to replace the cornea graft but to um, do the cataract procedure as well. You can see here the HANA trefine by Moria used to trefine the host cornea in a diameter of uh, 825 millimeters this is done at a depth of about 600 microns. Remember, this is a bullish keratopathy uh, cornea fail graph with thickness probably over 700 microns at that uh, peripheral point. This is a uh, keratome used to enter the anterior chamber and then viscoelastic to fill the anterior chamber and avoid injury uh, to the iris and the uh, crystalline lens, which is a cataract now with the um, Casariejo cornea scissors seen here. Uh, cutting the uh, uh, pre-trefined uh, tissue, always entering sideways to avoid injury of the uh, iris, and then bringing the scissors vertical, so we get a clean, straight cut, uh, guided by the uh, gutter created by the trephination of the host tissue. Uh, we saw first uh, left-handed, now uh, right-handed going uh, clockwise. Uh, we're seeing the surgeon's view so the top of the screen is the inferior part of the eye. The um, trephination is almost complete. Going back with the um, counterclockwise uh, scissors, uh, the viscoelastic will be removed from the uh, front of the anterior capsule. Um, the patient is under perfect uh, uh, general anesthesia to uh, attempt a continuous linear capsorexis. Of course, uh, this is quite a stressful procedure as it is performed open sky and uh, any movement or squeezing from the patient may predispose for uh, an ominous uh, suprachoroidal hemorrhage and expulsion of the intraocular contents. Uh, we're going to go ahead with a cystotome and perform a, a continuous cervilinear capsorexis as you will see here. Uh, open sky uh, with just BSS present over the anterior capsule. It's quite a challenging technique as there's no pressure uh, from the viscoelastic onto the anterior capsule uh, when this procedure is performed in routine cataract surgery under a closed um, anterior chamber. And um, special care is uh, being taken here to uh, manipulate the uh, capsule and not to have the uh, continuous capsule rexis run uh, to the periphery and uh, compromise the support of the uh, further uh, cataract extraction. You can see things go well here. Uh, the capsule rexis is almost completed. Uh, it's a large capsule rexis of about uh, six and a half millimeters in diameter and uh, the uh, continuous capsule rexis is performed uh, perfectly. We'll go on with the usual steps, uh, hydro dissection and hydro delineation, which will basically deliver the lens. As uh, you can see here, the lens pops out of the uh, capsule bag and uh, will be uh, delivered uh, with the uh, actual irrigation cannula. Uh, irrigation aspiration will follow to remove as much as cortical material as possible. In my opinion, this is a crucial step as uh, uh, posterior opacification in the combined procedure is quite challenging to YAG as it takes quite a while for the cornea uh, graft to become clear and enable uh, efficient uh, YAG capsulotomy. Again, this is performed open sky and as you can appreciate the visualization from all the uh, uh, water uh, streams coming out and uh, disturbing the uh, capture image is challenging. Although special care should be taken uh, to always uh, 
manipulate cortex uh, carefully avoid uh, grasping uh, the anterior capsule and of course uh, any of the posterior capsule uh, this is uh, really a, a perfect case the uh, cortical material is coming out quite nicely and uh, we're teasing here the uh, uh, cortical leaflets present uh, in the uh, capsule bag and then uh, engaging him to the irrigation aspiration and uh, uh, meticulously removing all, all cortical material uh, a step that will uh, provide us with uh, minimal chance for uh, posterior capsule opacification at least in the early postoperative period. The capture bag is filled uh, with HeLa and since the capture excess is perfect uh, we usually use a three-piece uh, MA Acrosoft Interactive Lens. We will use now a uh, single-piece Acrosoft IQ uh, intraocular lens since uh, the capsule support uh, both uh, posteriorly and anteriorly appears to be uh, ideal and we've had uh, great visual results with the aspheric lens as you can see here the lens is hydrated with BSS uh, so to be handled uh, uh, in an easier fashion um, uh, I like the fact that this lens uh, uh, has the yellow uh, tinge uh, something that blocks some of the uh, blue light that may be uh, damaging in these older patients as their macula does not have the resistance that a younger patient may have. The uh, trailing haptic is uh, carefully placed uh, within the capsule bag uh, seen here and we have a perfect implantation within the capsule bag of both the uh, inferior and now the anterior haptic you can see here uh, special care is taken for that happening take to engage within the capsule bag as well Michael will be used here to uh, bring down the pupil attain meiosis and uh, lock uh, the lens into position also avoid sneaky from the iris uh, pupillary margin to the uh, graph host interface and the uh, cornea graft uh, previously uh, prepared to an 8.5 millimeter diameter uh, slightly oversized uh, just 0.25 millimeter oversizing from the uh, trephination to the host the cardinal suture placed here again special attention used for the suture to go as deep as possible slide it right over decimates membrane in the graft and at the same location right over decimates membrane in the host through the uh, 12 o'clock position I remind you we're seeing the eye upside down through the surgeon's view um, the first knot will be uh, locked into place again all knots uh, square and uh, following trimming of the knots uh, they will be buried uh, within the um, stromal bed uh, to minimize uh, patient discomfort and irritation um, I prefer using the Westcott scissors to trim uh, the sutures as this uh, poses less injury and now the most important suture in a penetrating keroplasty the second suture uh, it needs to bisect uh, the cornea again uh, slightly over decimates membrane in the graft and in the host as well um, going through almost to the limbus uh, we're uh, making sure here that the graft is equally shared between the two sutures um, something we will avoid significantly uh, postoperative astigmatism again these maneuvers come with practice uh, 2009 is my uh, 17th year performing cornea transplants and uh, I enjoy nothing more than uh, this procedure especially for the uh, challenging point of uh, uh, being able to uh, perform a uh, quite nice cataract procedure uh, open sky so uh, all knots uh, uh, square seen here uh, also uh, by using the uh, small uh, needle curved needle holder and the forceps uh, uh, we're trying to uh, equally distribute the tightness of sutures and reduce astigmatism so thank you very much for following with me the triple procedure the combined penetrating keratoplasty open sky cataract extraction through a continuous linear capsule rexis and implantation of the single piece 
Acrosoft um, Aspheric and Tracker Lens, the IQ otherwise known. This was Dr. John Kenalopoulos from Athens, Greece, and I thank you again for your kind attention.